Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube. Are you using row level security and you're trying to figure out the performance overhead of using RLS and Power BI? I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Let's go. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, row level security in Power BI. When you're using row level security, sometimes you want to understand the performance overhead of using RLS in your report, and that can be hard to find. I've talked to a lot of customers where they've asked me that question, like, how do I actually go track this down? Because when I use certain tools that you talk about, Guy in a Cube, they just don't work. We are going to walk through how to actually do that in this video. All right. You know how we like to do things here on Guy in a Cube? Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. I've got a report here. This one is using static RLS. If you're not familiar with that term, I've got a playlist that I'll link up above. Also, we have a course over on guyinacube.com slash courses. You can go check that out. We've got a full course on role level security to learn about what it is. But in this case, we're going to start with static RLS. I've got one role. We're going to go to manage roles. I've got Hudson Onslow and then salesperson employee key equals 162. So that's my filter for role level security. And we can validate that if we go to view as we we can choose Hudson, hit OK, and bam, it's applying that data. Cool. So how do we figure out, you know, is this slower? Like what's the actual overhead? And if you go to view, you can use Performance Analyzer. That's a great place to start. Sometimes you want to know more information. So what I would always recommend is go to Performance Analyzer. We're going to refresh the visuals and then you're going to want to copy this query. You can check out the numbers here and compare. Then we're going to copy and we're going to head over to our favorite tool, DAX Studio. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we've got query one, we're going to connect this up to our data set or a Power BI desktop file, static RLS. Go and connect. There's no roles applied. We're just using the data set as my user. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top. There's a little icon. It's going to open a second query window. I'm going to select the same Power BI desktop file. I'm going to go under advanced, and then I can specify the actual role to apply to this connection. Put that in Hudson also. It reset my data set, make sure that goes back to static. And now we're connected as that role. That's amazing. So now what we're going to do, come over to query one. We're going to turn on server timing. So this one does not have role level security applied. We're going to grab our query from the visual and we're going to clear cache and then run it. We're going to look at server timings. Down here, we can see it took 10 milliseconds and we have five storage engine queries. This is our baseline, right? So this is what it is without RLS. Now let's go over to query two, do the same thing, put in the same exact query from the visual. We're going to turn on server timings, go to the server timings things. I'm going to come back to query one and remember 10 milliseconds, five storage engine queries, clear the cache. Cause I can't clear the cache when I've applied row level security. It'll give me an error. Let's go ahead and run that. And so now you can see it took 27 milliseconds and 16 storage engine queries. That's the overhead of row level security. And these are things you need to think about when you apply it. In this case, this row level security, I have seen complicated row level security rules that have been applied. This is straightforward. All right, moving on. So the nice thing about dynamic row level security is we can actually supplement based on the logged in user. So there are two functions, user principal name and custom data. There's also username, but I always recommend using user principal name. So the user principal name will return the value of your actual, what's referred to as a user principal name. So your UPN, it looks like an email address, but this is what you would actually sign into Power BI with. Custom data can be whatever you want. It's just a string, but the default would be the user principal name. Same thing here. So we can go look at our role. I've got my salesperson. You can see this is a little more complicated. The big thing to note here is we're using the user principal name function and we're doing some if statements. So now what I want to do is I want to run this as Hudson Oslo and use his email address to do it. So I'm going to go to view as I'm going to do other person and I'm going to choose the role that I want to replicate. This is using the user principal name. So we do that and we can see Hudson Oslo at guyinacube.com and it's filtered the data down. So this is working great. Again, you can use performance analyzer to go get the query for the visual. And then we could jump over to Power BI desktop. This is where it starts getting a little complicated. So again, I want to connect my first one. This time we're going to connect to dynamic RLS. So this is my base one. I can clear cache. I can do all sorts of cool things. I'm going to create my new one. So now we're going to add the role name in and I want to add the effective username is going to pass in what that UPN is that I want to replicate. But here's the problem. From a Power BI perspective, effective username doesn't work. No joy. 
And this is what a lot of people struggle with is when we get to this point, well, how do we actually test this if I'm using dynamic row level security? The static RLS was fairly easy. So let's look at how we can do this. If we go back to our file, you may have noticed there's another role in here, salesperson custom. And what I did here is I swapped out the user principal name with custom data function. What I'm doing here to test is I'm making a copy of the exact role that I want to go test, but I'm using custom data instead of user principal name. Again, this is just a string, but I can just pass in that email address and then have it validate without having to use that effective username item from DAX Studio's perspective. Come back over to DAX Studio. We're going to try and connect again. Dynamic RLS is my Power BI desktop file. We're going to get rid of effective username. And this time we're going to add in the custom role. And then what we're going to do is under this additional options, this is basically adding a property to the connection string. I'm going to add custom data equals and then the email address. So we got a role, a custom role that's using custom data and then I'm supplying the value for custom data on the connection string connect bam that worked so same thing again here we're going to go get our baseline let's go get the query we already have that from before turn on server timings we're going to clear the cache and then we're going to run so this one was 11 milliseconds five storage engine queries similar to the last run that we did come over to here we're going to do server timings and then we're going to go back to the one where rls is not applied clear the cache and then we're going to run it okay again 29 milliseconds 18 storage engine queries this is how we can go test it and validate it using a tool like dax studio against the power bi desktop file but adam We've got this larger model that's up in the service. Power BI desktop's not reflective of the actual data that's in my data set. So how do I do this against the service? In this case, you're gonna have to have either a premium capacity or premium per user because we need to use the XMLA endpoint to connect the tools to go get this information. Now, another option that's potentially available for you is the log analytics items, because that'll be tracking all of the data that's coming. And so that's something you could look at as well. I've got another video out there talking about the log analytics capabilities to bring your own log analytics. So you can check that out if you want. That's going to go collect the AS traces and allow you to dig into those items. But if you want to use this using the tools that we're talking about, well, let's go take a look at that. So I've already deployed my dynamic RLS to the service. The other thing I've done is under security, I've added John Doe's user to the salesperson custom role. Remember, we need to assign users to that role. John Doe is a viewer of the workspace. This is important because if they're an admin user, RLS won't be applied. You know, when I was recording this, I kind of forgot about that part and I was racking my, I'm like, why is this not working? And it was because I wasn't using a user in the viewer role. So make sure the user that you're actually testing the RLS against is in the viewer role of the workspace space. You have to have these things in place if you want to test it. So let's go back to DAX Studio. So again, same concept. I'm going to go ahead and connect. This time I'm going to use tabular server and I'm going to put in the XMLA endpoint for the workspace. If you're not sure how to get that, you can go to settings in the workspace, go to the premium tab, and then it will give you that connection string that you can supply to your tools. So we're going to connect to that, just connect, and then I'm going to log in with my user. Let's just go real quick. We'll do server timings, clear the cache, and let's get our baseline. So let's run it. 16 milliseconds, five storage engine queries. We're still in the same range of where we were in Power BI desktop. If I run it again, these numbers can fluctuate a little bit. A couple milliseconds. So now let's go create a new connection. Again, I'm going to use the same XMLA endpoint here. I'm going to actually specify the data set that I'm going to connect to. And I still want to do the custom data test. So we've got a role. We've got our custom data. I've specified my actual data set name. Everything looks good. Let's go and connect. One thing I forgot to call out is when you do this initially, you may not see the actual model and it may give you an error saying no database found. If that's the case, the other thing you need to make sure here is if I go down to manage permissions on the data set, make sure you give your viewer user build permissions. That's the only way they're going to be able to use it through the XMLA endpoint. All right, so we're connected. This is great. Let's go get our query. And now I'm going to do server timings. Huh. That actually worked. When I was doing this before, I was getting some like fatal exception error. So this is great. So now we can go back to query one, clear cache, and then we'll go back to query two, go to server timings and run the query. There we go. 31 milliseconds, five storage engine queries. I don't think role level security was applied because it's showing us this. So let's go back to connect and validate. And what's happening is, is that in this context, it's actually still under my credentials that I signed in as. You'll notice it never prompted me to sign in as John Doe. If you see this where it's similar to what you had 
had on the main one without RLS, where it was five storage engine queries and it was like 16 milliseconds, that's a red flag that RLS is not actually in play here. So what you have to do here is actually open up a second instance of DAX Studio to actually go test this, to get the prompt for the user. So this one's under my main admin credentials. So let's get rid of that. We're gonna start a new instance of DAX Studio. We're gonna do this again. So this time let's do the catalog. So we've got our initial catalog, we've got our XML endpoint, we've got our role defined, and then we're specifying custom data. Go to connect, it'll prompt me now to log in. Do John Doe. So now we've got two instances of DAX Studio. We've got our admin one, and then we've got our John Doe. So now on John Doe's, let's go ahead and hit server timings. And this is where we get some issues, fatal internal error. So this is the problem I hit when I'm trying to do server timings with row level security applied against the XMLA endpoint, it doesn't let me do server timings. This may be a bug, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna assume it's a permission related issue. So what do we do? If we can't use DAX Studio, the other option I have is we can actually just go get trace information using something like SQL Profiler, or as I mentioned before, you can use the log analytics. Let me show SQL Profiler here real quick. I'm gonna go and connect to my XMLA endpoint, and I'm gonna connect with my admin credential. There's two events I'm gonna go grab. One is going to be query event, so we're going to do query end. And the other one I'm going to do is query processing, come down, and I'm going to show the Vertipak storage engine query end. The query end is the actual DAX statement that I run. And then the Vertipak storage engine query, these are the storage engine queries that we have before. In our other run, we saw that we got like five without RLS and we got more if we had RLS in play. And then we're going to go and run. So now this is going to trace information on the given item. And I've got to restart the John Doe. I'm going to cut over to my admin one. I'm going to clear the cache and then we'll go back over to John Doe and we will run the query. We can see we get data back. That is important. Make sure that you're seeing actual data. And then if we go back to SQL Profiler, we'll see all of these storage engine query ends. So this activity ID is what we want to track. So we're going to look for the query end for that activity ID as well. And it hasn't come up yet. So we'll just give it a second. And then we get our query end and then we can see the overall duration is 62 milliseconds. And we can look at the queries that are issued and even go through the different actual storage engine queries to make comparisons from that standpoint. It's not ideal, but those are ways that you can go about against the XMLA endpoint when it's actually in the service. If you can do it from a Power BI desktop file, it's gonna be a lot easier, or at least will give you the most information using DAX Studio. But the information DAX Studio is giving you is the information coming from the trace information anyway. So. It's the same data. All right, I want to hand this over to you. What do you think? Does this help you actually track down performance for role level security? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any tips that maybe I missed, leave that down below and share that with everyone else as well. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.